Hey guys, how's it going? I just kind of want to repeat myself in a little short video that I just made uh, today when I got off work. Uh, anyways, I was talking about how Rene Roland made this video and people misinterpret this passage where Jesus talks about, you know, whosoever shall break the least of these commandments and teach others to do so, they will be the least in the kingdom of heaven. And I said it's like a play on words, it's a figure of speech. There are no least commandments. I mean, I would like someone to tell me what are the least commandments of God. You know, like, look at like the Ten Commandments. Which one, which one of those is the least, you know? Uh, you know, none of them. They're all God's laws, they're all God's commands, you know? And somebody might say, well, we don't have to keep the Sabbath today. That doesn't mean that it's a least commandment. That just means, you know, it doesn't apply today. Or so, right? So there are no least commandments, and you know that's what that's what Jesus is saying. You know, there are no least commandments. Um, so, but if if we're going to interpret it like that, then then here's what they're trying to say. You see, they're trying to say that, man, they interpret like all these passages backwards, like to where it's heretical and damnable. It's it's, you know, somebody can be saved and and nobody could ever know it. You know, somebody could be an atheist all their life and they're saved. Somebody could, uh, you know, be a Satanist and, and they're saved just because they said that they believed in Jesus before in the past at some point or something. But they could have no fruit. You know, they teach that they don't, that a saved, born-again Christian doesn't have to bear fruit. The exact opposite of what Scripture teaches. But let's just talk about that verse that says, you know, whosoever shall break one of the least of, you know, these commandments and teach others to do so, they will be at least in the kingdom of heaven. So if we're going to interpret in the way that they try to say it, let's just try to, like, modernize the language or whatever. How would Jesus say it? So they're basically saying that Jesus was saying, um, you know those commandments of God that, you know, don't really matter that much, you know, those those little commandments, you know, you know whatever, those ones, yeah, if, if somebody breaks those, then they'll, they can still be saved, but, you know, they, they won't, they, they'll just be, you know, lesser in glory. In eternity, they'll have a lesser role. But it's not really a big deal. So if you just want to break commandments all you want, you know, uh, you know a saved person, they can just break commandments and uh, have no concern for the, the you know, no uh, submitting to God's commandments whatsoever. Uh, they'll just, they'll just uh, have a lesser position in eternity. I mean, come on, guys. That is not what Jesus is saying. Okay, it's it's usually black and white, like, all the time. And they'll take verses where Paul clearly says that no adulterer, no fornicator, no whoremonger, no drunkard, you know, whatever, will inherit the kingdom of God. And then they try to say, well, you can be saved, but still not inherit the kingdom of God, or whatever. No, inheriting the kingdom of God is having eternal life. Okay, that that is, you know, being born again. Once a person is born again, they're inheriting the kingdom of God, okay? So it's black and white. It's saying, no, these people aren't saved, okay? And then so so I give what I believe is the correct interpretation of this passage where Jesus says, whosoever shall break the least of these commandments and teach others to do so, they will be the least in the kingdom of heaven. And I'll say, you know, this is saying, you know, people who aren't saved, and then they'll they'll always try to say, well, you're teaching works then, or whatever. You know, I'm saying what Jesus was saying. Jesus wasn't teaching works. Jesus always talked about fruit all the time. He always explained, you know, what is the fruit uh, of true salvation? You know, what does true salvation look like? He always talked about, you know, you'll know them by their fruit. And, you know, a, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. You know, a bad tree cannot bear good fruit, basically. And so he's always talking about fruit. And that's what he's talking about here, you know keeping the commandments, someone who doesn't, someone who has no regard for the commandments and, you know, breaks them and teaches others to do so, that's the fruit of a lost person. They'll be least in the kingdom of heaven. Least in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, that means not be there at all. It's a figure of speech, you know, and it's like one that, like, packs a punch, and I love it. And one of the reasons I want to make this video is not just to go over that, but just also to give praise to God because... I love how Jesus spoke in parables. I love how he used figures of speech and stuff and this colorful language and, and brought things to life. And it's so awesome. And, you know, it's, sometimes it's hard for us to understand these things. And, you know, he's like an enigma. But just how praiseworthy is he for that? And, you know, 
he's not just some cold, dead stone that people worship. You know, he's the true living God. And, you know, we don't just, pra- we shouldn't just praise him just for, you know, his power and his love and his mercy and, and all that. You know, that's all praiseworthy. Everything about God is praiseworthy. But also just the fact of how creative he was. And, you know, and Jesus just, um, you know, just for his language and stuff. That's praiseworthy. And, you know, I love it. I love it. And, and the Bible is so interesting. And I love studying the Bible. It's the Word of God. And it's so powerful. And it's so rich. And, you know, even in the darkest places, I mean, if you just, if you have the Word of God, um, you know, whether it's written or you just have it in your memory, it's it's just so potent. And it's awesome. Uh, but we got to understand that Jesus, all the time, you know, he used figures of speech and stuff, and uh, I think that this was, um, you know, I'm not explaining it in the best detail. I'll go over this more and more, and I'll refine it and get the study written down on the website and stuff. But, you know, like I said, I think it's the Pharisees and stuff. You know, they thought that, you know, some 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 commandments they broke, and then they were really strict on other ones. You know, he talked about how they strain an ant and swallow a camel. Well, that's obviously a figure of speech. Nobody's going to take that literally. And so, but you know, the idea is there that they're, they're, they are you know judging others or something and having a plank in your own eye. You know, pulling out the speck of your brother's or you know pointing out the speck in your brother's eye and having a plank in your own eye is kind of the same thing. You know. And, so they they were concerned about some matters, and then the, yet they broke other laws. And so I think that this was to them him saying this, you know, the the least of these commandments, you know, uh, whoever shall break the least of these commandments and teach others to do so. So I think it's basically like a person who has no regard for the commandments of God. That's that's you know, evidence of a lost person. That's evidence of a person who will be least in the kingdom, which means not there at all. There are no least commandments of God. Okay, so first of all, if you can see that, which that should be pretty obvious, then you should be able to get the other part. Okay, because, you know, they go hand in hand. Um, and so there's, no, there's none that are least in the kingdom of heaven. And there's no loss of rewards. That's a false doctrine, you know, where there's going to be lesser saved people. There's going to be this, these different tiers of elite Christians who won more souls to Christ than this. No, everybody gets to heaven because of what Christ did. Okay, so, you know, we all are going to get that reward if we have put our trust in Christ and we're born again. Then we get the full reward that, you know, Christ uh, got for us. So... Anyways, but just think about that, how you're going to interpret the other way. If you're not agreeing with what I'm saying, uh, then you're basically saying that Jesus said there are some commandments of God that really don't matter, and it doesn't really matter if you break those and teach others to do so. You know, you'll just be uh, somehow lesser, but you won't be in hell. So, no, that's not what Jesus was saying. This, you know, this is a lot more... uh, this needs to be understood correctly. So, anyways, praise God for all that He is, all that He's done, and uh, hallelujah. So, love you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thanks for watching. God bless.